G'day everyone, today we're going to be going through the industry in Hearts of Iron 4. I'll go through what sieves and mills are for, how to improve your industry through economy laws and research, what consumer goods are, as well as some of the other state and province level buildings in the game. I'll also give you a rough guide of what you should focus on when you're starting out towards the end of the video, so stick around for that. But firstly, I wanted to say if you're finding these guides helpful, please consider leaving and like and subscribing to see when I post new content. And if you don't like this video, just keep your opinion to yourself. Alrighty, so first things first, if you open up your construction tab just up here, this is gonna give you an overview of what's currently in your construction queue. Currently nothing. Uh, what buildings are available for you to build on the right hand side, uh, as well as the number of civilian factories that you have available. Civilian factories are these orange ones over here. They are what are used to build literally all the other buildings in the game, as well as repair damaged ones. Uh, you also use your civilian factories to trade for resources. Uh, your military factories are the other type of factory in the game, and they're solely for the purpose of producing military equipment. They don't help build other factories, nor do they repair anything or themselves. They exist purely just for your war effort. In the top left up here, you can see this number, the 9 out of 32. That shows you how many of your sieves are currently in use, uh, traded for resources, or lost to consumer goods. What are consumer goods, I hear you ask? They are literally the worst thing in the game. Consumer goods are representative of how many of your civilian factories are used to make things for the general public, just like in a real world scenario. Not all of your factories can be used to support the war effort. Any sieves lost to consumer goods are unable to be used to build anything until you reduce your consumer goods level. You can see the number of sieves lost to consumer goods next to the toaster icon here. Uh, and if you hover over it, the tooltip will tell you what percentage of your total factories are lost. So that's your sieves and mills in total, um, as well as what factors influence this, such as national spirits, economy laws, or your stability. Uh, it's worth noting, even though the percentage takes into account your total sieve and military factories, the civilian factories are the only ones that are lost to consumer goods. Just below the toaster here, you can see the Amazon parcel icon. This shows you how many of your factories are traded away for resources. If you open up the trade menu here, uh, you can see that generally you would trade away one civilian, whoop, not that many, uh, you would trade away one civilian factory for eight units of that specific resource. So if you find that you're running a bit short on civilian factories, you might consider canceling your trade to get some back. You can reduce the factories lost to consumer goods and to trade by changing some of your laws. So if we jump over into our main menu here, uh, your economy law is probably the best way to reduce your consumer goods overall. So you can see the further down the list you go, the less consumer goods uh, you have. So for example, civilian economy at the top, a lot of your factories are going to make stuff for the peasants. If you come down here to war economy, you go from 35% to 20%, so that is incredible. You basically want to be getting to war economy uh, in you know having more of your factories supporting a war effort as early as possible. Just like with a lot of things in this game, the effects snowball and the earlier you can reduce that level, the stronger you'll be in the long run. With your trade law, you'll see that each level here has a different percentage of the amount of goods that are exported to the market. So again, if you're finding you're losing a lot of your sieves because you need to trade for a lot of resources, try reducing your trade law. So back to the construction menu. If you want to put those sieve factories to work, just click first on the type of building that you want to construct, and then you can select a state to build them in. So what you're seeing now on the map is how many available building slots there are in each state, as well as the infrastructure level, as shown by the percentage just underneath here. That will affect how quickly a building is constructed in that particular state. So for example, if we queue up one building in Brandenburg, uh, one sieve in Brandenburg, one sieve in Ostmark, we have a look on the left-hand side, we can see the Brandenburg building will be finished on the 19th of March. And then if we drag Ostmark to the top, give it the first priority, that won't be built until the 28th. So as it has a lower infrastructure level, it'll take nine days longer to build. On the construction menu now, you can see that we have these two factories in our queue. 
The game will allocate all available Civ factories to the buildings at the top of the list, and then in a descending order from there. So if you have something that you want to be built sooner, you can click and drag it to the top of your queue. You can also see here that each line can only have a maximum of 15 sieves working on it at any one time. So if you have extra, they'll go to the next factory down or the next building line down on the list and so on and so on. A few helpful shortcuts to know are if you control click on a state, it will add one building to the top of your production queue. If you shift click on a state, it will add the maximum amount of buildings to the bottom of the queue. And if you hold control and shift click, it will add the maximum amount of buildings to the top of the queue. So these are super handy to know, write them down. They're also here on the tooltip if you hover over a particular state. As I mentioned, infrastructure levels will also affect your construction speed in a state. And you can increase this by using this icon up the top here uh, for the infra. So if you increase infra in a particular state that has resources in it, you actually increase the amount of resources that you gain as well. So you can see here, if we just max all these out, uh, we're actually gaining additional resources. So again, if you find you're trading away a lot of sieves, without changing your economy law, you can increase the infrastructure in your states to get some of your sieves back. At the top of the construction menu as well, you can see your overall construction speed, as well as any factors that influence it if you hover over the tooltip. If your economy law is more open, you actually get a boost to your construction speed, so it can be worth going onto free trade early in the game before you have a lot of resources required for your production. I did touch on this in my research guide, which I'll link below, but your industry techs, uh, these are the ones that you need to look at doing to increase your construction speed, increase the amount of factories available in the state here, and increasing your resource gain. So make sure you get onto doing these early. Now I'll just give you a brief overview of the buildings available and their uses. Uh, you can see that most of them here are split up into three different categories. It's important to understand why and also how these differ from each other. So the top category here are state level buildings. So these are all built in a particular state and each type of building has its own limit. For example, if I max out the infrastructure in this state, that doesn't mean that I can't build airports here because it has its own capacity that I can build up to. The next category down are the shared buildings. These do share a building limit defined by your industry tax. So you'll need to balance what you want to build per state. So for example, if I max out the civilian factories in this state here, I can't then go and build military factories or dockyards. It just simply won't let me. I won't be able to build anything else in here until I increase the limit available through those industry tax. Now in the final category down here, you've got your province level buildings. So these are all built per tile or per province. So they also have their own unique limits too. So if I just max out the forts along the border here, I can still go and build a supply hub in each of those states, or I can build a railway line uh, if it'll let me. So yeah, these have their own unique limits, the same as the state level buildings do. If we go back up to the state level buildings here, you've got your infra, which we touched on earlier. You've got your airports, which can be built in a state to increase your airport capacity by 200. Uh, you have your state AA, which shoots down enemy bombers or close air support when they're completing a sortie in that region. So just a note, this doesn't target enemy fighters. So you'll have to have your own to help with that. You also have radar, which is super useful for helping target enemy aircraft and ships, uh, as well as enemy units in nearby regions. And if you actually hover over uh, where, like whichever state you want to build it in, you can see the range uh, once the first level will be built. Next in the shared buildings, you have your mills and your sieves. Uh, below that are your dockyards, which are used to build and repair naval vessels. Then you've got your refineries. So they will give you a small amount of oil and rubber. You've got your fuel silos and your rocket sites, which you don't really have to build because they're shit, so don't worry about that. Uh, just below that is a real fun one, so the nuclear reactors. They're more of a late game tech, uh, however, or a late game building rather, but if you want me to make a short video on how to nuke people, just let me know in the comments. Uh, also next to that is the convert factory option. Uh, it's not really something that you need to worry about as a beginner, so just ignore this one now as well, and I'll put that in your advanced guide. Uh, finally, your province level buildings here, you've got your supply hubs, railway lines, 
naval bases, and then you've got your land and coastal forts. So I'm gonna do a dedicated video on supply, but the forts can be super useful when defending weak points in your front lines, uh, any narrow passes, or for defending your coastal, uh, your ports from any enemy that you don't wanna let them have it just for free. So that's pretty much the gist of the industry in Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, I did promise I'd give you a rough guide for the early game, so here it is. For the most part, you're going to want to build only civilian factories until about 1938 or nine, very, very early 1939 if you're playing a historical game. Then you can swap over to your military factories, but you just want to make sure you're building civs, especially in your high infra-level infra states first. Don't worry too much about upgrading your infrastructure. A lot of national focuses will do this for you in the early game, and you just want your production to focus on growing your civilian factories. Focus on your industry techs first until you get to a point where there's a pretty severe ahead of time penalty, then you can swap off and do other things. Also, if you have national focuses that reduce your consumer goods, just do it. I literally can't underestimate how much high consumer goods will hamstring your economy. Get to war economy as early as possible, go to free trade real early, take any war bonds decisions once you're at war and it will help you out so much. I know that most of you will be tempted to build mills and dockyards right off the bat just so you can make your army big and strong, but remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. Also if you're playing historical, you should know roughly when you're going to be at war, so you can swap over to building mills about a year before then and you'll be just fine, kid. I hope you found this helpful and entertaining, and if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see when I post new videos. Also, you might notice that my voice sounds extra silky smooth right now. That's because I was fortunate enough to be able to afford a new mic, thanks to people like you for watching this video, and also my subscribers on Twitch. Speaking of Twitch, I also stream over there. My link is in the description, so please stop by and say g'day, and I'll see you in the next one. G'day everyone, today we're going to be going through the industry in Hearts of Iron 4. We'll go through what sieves and mills are for, how to improve your industry through economy laws and research. Oh my god, it's a wrong goddamn video. I already did the Sharknado one, what the fuck? Oh my god.